the being that we inhabit. Mm. Uh, it's another realm of dimensions and sight and sound and hearing, things that we can't even have the conceptual language to even talk about. Mm, indeed. And uh, you also quoted the Incas, and I thought this also was a very good reference, that we are meeting ourselves again, which clearly infers that we have come from the higher dimensions. Right. And the Aztecs, you know, this every tribe, the Pueblos, the Dogon tribe, I'm sure you know about the Dogon tribe in Africa, they, they were visited about six or 700 years ago, and they were given star information on Sirius A and B, the time it took for Sirius to go around Sirius A. And we're just recently, in the last 20, 25 years, coming to some of this knowledge. Mm. Right. Uh, when you move on to Christian beliefs, I, which I believe you can relate as far as the stories go, that is in the Bible, uh, to Egyptian times, I believe you found a lot of similarities with stories such as the final judgment, the virgin birth, and so forth. Would, would you like to tell us a little bit about uh, what you actually found in the Egyptian sort of stories? Sure. Well, while doing the research for my book, I was uh, privileged to really be able to get in touch with quite a few uh, rabbis, priests, and biblical scholars and one of the things that started coming to light is the higher up the chain you go as far as education, the less people really take the story literally. And I was asking them, well, where does this come from? I mean, if I give you a piece of information, the first thing you want to know is where did it come from? Well, if you go back to the Sumerian tablets, where, which were written about 3000 BC, you'll find that there's like the epic of creation. And the epic of creation is almost word for word the Genesis story. Uh, the epic of Gilgamesh was the uh, story of the flood. But they predate the biblical stories by centuries, if not millennia. So this brings to question another thing. If, if the whole Judeo-Muslim Christian religions are based upon the absolute fact, and this is from biblical scholars, it's based upon the absolute fact that Moses went up to the mountain and spoke to God, and God gave him the first five books, which is the Torah. Well, if that's not true, then that sort of pulls the hinge pin out of all three religions as far as their validity. And I think in today's world of polarized religious beliefs, I can't see anything more important than taking some of the fire out of these groups. Yes, uh, I take it you mean that in the sense that people will have to start thinking for themselves rather than being led into what they should believe. Yes, question everything. Because again, if, if you just accept a belief without questioning it, without validating it, and seeing it for yourself experientially, again, it's like looking at pictures of food, thinking that you're eating, but you're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... To me, it doesn't even really matter if, if Moses actually had that event or not. But that was his experience. I'm looking for my own experience. And if I accept his experience as my own, it's I'm not going to get anything out of it. It's not going to cause any transformation of consciousness if I do that. Right. Now, I'm sure with all your research, you must have uh, come across the articles which cover the uh, meeting that Emperor Constantine had, uh, I think it was about 300 AD, where he actually formulated what we know as the Bible. And I read that what he effectively did, and this is my words, he took what you might call the best of many other people's religious beliefs and put them into, the, into one book which he called the Bible. Now, would, that, would you agree with that? Well, basically, that's, Conclusion. Yeah, that's where the Bible that we have today somewhat came from. And a lot of that, you have to remember, Constantine's whole nation was divided. And there was a lot of Christians at the time, and his mother was a Christian. And he's seen this as a very good um, movement on his part to save his empire. And it worked. And it's been working ever since, because something that the state has noticed 
for many, many centuries is something that Voltaire brings out. If, if they can make us believe in absurdities, they can make us commit atrocities. Mm-hmm. And what people have found out in state and nations is that they can get religious people that believe in something not connected to reality. To get them to believe that is the same mental attitude and the same neurological uh, patterns that it takes to actually manipulate a person to do things that they wouldn't normally do. Mm. Yes, I, I think a lot of that uh, in some religion comes from telling people that they will be rewarded if they do certain things for their God. Uh, horrible things which perhaps in the normal events they wouldn't even consider. But it is because their God has said, you do it and I'll reward you. Right. Yeah, and, and, and again, there, there is a neurological aspect to, because you have to remember, for a belief to be, it has to be believable. And sometimes if a belief is so totally absurd, now forget whether it's true or not true, put that out of your mind. If it's so absurd, it lacks any kind of experiential evidence for us to believe that. In the words of Dr. Andrew Newberg, he says what happens is for a belief to be believable, you need to start breaking neural connections from known evidence and from known experience. And if you do enough of that neurological breakdown, it can cause atrophy of the brain, which is actually, in his words, is called brain damage. Mm. Now, uh, speaking about the Bible, I believe you found uh, that there were some 70 verses that describe clouds as vehicles, which today we would probably say were UFOs. So, although some religious people might be fearing of UFOs and ETs, uh, the fact is that there are what you could call clear references to them in the Bible. Yes, many, many references. And, and we also have to keep in mind some of the words that were changed in the Bible. Uh, words like when they used the word horse, actually the Hebrew word meant flight or swiftness of flight. Wow. So, you know, little things like that changes a lot. And we also have to recognize, too, if I say to you, i seen a flying saucer, well, you know that I'm not talking about a saucer from my cupboard because this is the term... <laughs> that we use today. So mm-hmm. back in those days, the only things that flew were clouds and birds. So it very well could have been that this is what they called them, clouds. Yes, uh, I remember, I think, something from some Roman writings where they spoke about flying shields. So that they had to use their own descriptions that were understood at the time. Yeah, I think the only ancient text that really comes to grips with this and, and tried to explain it in a more technological way was the Mahabharata and the Ramayana. They speak of Vimanas and explain what a Vimana is. It's a round cylindrical disc and some of them they even explain how they had a propulsion of air that came out the back that pushed them through the air. Mm-hmm. So they, they gave a better um, definition of it. Right. Now you do have some interest in the Roswell beings. What did you make of that whole episode? Well, I think that was the beginning of our really overt contact, especially on a governmental level. And if you have to think back about this, this was soon after we started letting off atomic bombs. And I think this is something that interests extraterrestrials because we are not quite sure what this does on an interdimensional level when we start busting apart atoms, but we do know that it <clears throat> it can really ruin our environment for many, many years. And I think at this level, they're, they're real interested in what we're doing. Uh, I think you're absolutely right there, because um, I think it was only in the last few weeks that there have been a number of uh, top military personnel that have come out quite openly with stories about ETs actually uh, neutralizing some of these bombs uh, where they are were actually held on on the sites. 